Hi, Claudia here from Create with Claudia, and I'm really excited to bring you this video today. A little while ago, I made a video on 50 things you can use from around the house while quilting. And I got so many viewer tips and suggestions, I really appreciated it. So what I did is I decided to go ahead and assemble those together and make a second video. So here are 25 household items you can use when quilting. I have not used all of these items, um, and there's some I don't, I don't even have to be able to show you, but I'll, I'll try to explain them to you. There are some great tips in there. I really appreciate it, and I really appreciate everybody uh, leaving those tips. I'd love it if you hit the subscribe button so you can see every video I post. I post, or I try to post weekly. Uh, I'm not always successful, but usually I, I can get one out every week. You'll also find me on social media, at Create with Claudia. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and I post daily th uh, pictures of projects I'm working on, things I've worked on in the past, that sort of thing. So again, thanks so much for watching, and keep those tips coming, I appreciate them, and I hope you enjoy the video. The first two tips are using the rubber placemats or the rubber shelving you can find in stores. So my first viewer tip was on uh, rubber shelving, and you can get this anywhere. I actually picked this up at our local dollar store, and it was great. I had two different tips for this. I had used it also. I showed um, I had a rubber placemat, and I put it under the machine so the machine wouldn't slip, and that was in my first video. But then I had su some suggestions. The first suggestion was putting pieces under your hands for hand quilting. I think that's a great idea. I haven't tried that yet, but I like that idea. The next one was cutting one small piece and putting it under your presser foot. And I am definitely going to use this because my presser foot likes to travel across the room. And I'm forever bending over and sliding it back or fidgeting with my foot to slide it back. So there are two great ways to use that rubber shelving. Tip number three is using a heavy duty napkin holder and I'll show you how. So tip number three is a, a great idea, and I'm actually using it now in my quill room. And it's a great way to store your rulers. I have lots of rulers. I have more than this, and they're floating all around. They fly all around. I can't ever find them. So I have this heavy-duty old napkin holder that I don't use anymore. It was sitting in our junk room. I, I think it was in my yard sale pile. And it's heavy enough. You don't want to, you want to use a heavy-duty one. And you just slip your rulers in. Almost any size will do, and that's what's nice about the heavy duty is it won't tip over. And there you have it. Now your rulers are nice, they're organized, you can find them easily. Um, great tip. Thank you so much for this one. Number four is using magnets around the quilt room. And believe me, they'll save your feet from a lot of pain. <laughs> okay, here's tip number four, and my husband thanks everyone who suggested this. Um, I actually rated his toolbox for this. This is a magnetic pole. You can get it at a hardware store and it extends. It's really nice. It extends really long. So I don't have to bend over every time I drop a pin or a safety pin. It picks them right up. I love this tip. Um, and I might actually just take this, but shh, don't tell my husband that. Um, and he will thank you because I'm always dropping pins and safety pins on the floor and I can't find them because our carpeting is in, the, in my studio is sort of gray. So the, the pins and the safety pins, they all blend in. So there you go, cheap little device you can get at a hardware store. It's a telescopic magnet pole. Picks up all everything you drop. So that's another great tip, thank you. Don't throw out those mint tins. You'll need them for this next tip. This is a great way to get rid of all those needles that are old, maybe bent, you don't use them anymore, and rotary blade cutters that are dull. Uh, you don't want to just throw those in the trash, at least I don't, because they can poke through the tra trash bag and you can somebody could get hurt with it. Also, if you have little ones around the house, it's a, um, they are a hazard. So putting them in a tin like this is great. This is just a chewing gum, plastic chewing gum container. Somebody also mentioned metal mint tins. Anything like that would work. I mentioned prescription bottles in my last video, but I love this idea too. And these I always have sitting around the house and I hate to say it, I always end up throwing them away. I like the shape of this one. I might have to do a craft with this one. But anyway, mint tins are a great way to get rid of those old needles and old rotary cutters before you throw them in the trash. You'll need a plastic bag for tip number six. All right, this one's going to be a little noisy, so I'm not going to try to wrinkle it too much. Uh, this is another great one. And honestly, sometimes the t tips are so simple, but it's something you just don't think about. This is a plastic bag, you know, one of the ones you get at the grocery store that you either throw away or you use for a trash can liner or something. I know that I have my sewing machine, uh, excuse me, my trash can way over in the corner of my room. I don't know why I have it there and I probably should move it closer, but I don't. So I end up throwing all my little threads next to my machine, on my table, wherever. Well, somebody suggested putting one of these next to your machine. Well, 
that's a perfect idea. So I will always have one now, and that way I don't have to sit there afterwards and vacuum and clean up everything that I toss all over the place. Because I'll admit it, I'm a messy quilter. Um, I don't know about you, but I know I am. So thanks for that tip, and it's a great use of that plastic bag. Put that hard top for your sewing machine to good use for the next tip. So staying on the subject of uh, keeping a good handle on your trash, some people, and I do not have one so I can't show you that, they have hard covers for their sewing machines. And what they do, what this person suggested, was taking it, flipping it over, putting it next to your machine, and it's perfect. You just toss your, your scraps or um, little threads, any kind of trash, just toss it in it and then take it over your trash can when you're good to go. So thank you for that tip. Another one for cleaning out your machine, and this is one I never thought of, and again, a couple of viewers mentioned this, actually somebody mentioned it on my blog as well, is a makeup brush to help get away all that lint. Um, I probably never thought of this because I don't really wear makeup um, very much, so I also have to thank my daughter for letting me use one of her makeup brushes <laughs> for this demonstration. This is perfect. You got real soft bristles so you don't hurt anything. It wipes up all that lint. Um, and that's a great solution to clean out that machine. Never lose your small sewing scissors with this next tip. Here's a great idea that I definitely plan on using. I always have a little pair of scissors, these little snippy scissors, uh, right next to my machine. And again, it's something that when you're moving fabric around or a big quilt or you're quilting, it always gets thrown on the floor or hidden somewhere or under fabric and I can't find them. And this person suggested taking a really long string, tying it around, the one end and then tying it around the sort of neck of your machine so it's out of the way and that way you never lose these scissors. A brilliant idea and this will help me immensely because <laughs> I spent a lot of time looking for these little scissors. I love them. They're nice. They're easy. You can just keep them next to your machine and snip and this way they don't get lost so so quickly. So there you go. Piece of string, your scissors, and you won't lose them again. So that's another great tip. Thank you so much. For the next tip, you're going to be raiding your kitchen. Uh, so get out that old recipe holder that you have that you never use, and you'll use it in your quilting room. This person says that they use one of those old recipe holders. You know, one of those things that uh, holds the recipe upright. It sort of lays a little bit um, at an angle so you can read the recipe. I'm going to sort of show you with this. I do not have a recipe holder. so. Um, but what they do is they prop up their pattern next to their machine so it's easy to read. Uh, another great idea. I'm always flipping mine over. I have to look. Um, it gets covered by fabric or whatever. So if you have an old recipe holder that you aren't using, that's a great use for it. Just prop it up next to your machine and when you're working on a specific pattern, prop up your pattern. If you have an old jar that you have sitting around that you never use, this is the perfect tip for you. This is a great tip, especially if you do a lot of quilting and you use those really big spools of thread. Now, pretend there aren't any buttons in here. I don't have an empty jar and I didn't feel like emptying out all these buttons. But this person said they put a big spool of thread in their jar, poke a hole in the top of the jar, and then feed it through and that's their machine. A lot of machines, especially smaller machines, don't have those long spool holders. So that's a great solution when you have those big spools of thread. I have never tried this, so I'm, I'm not sure how well it works, but they said they used it. So um, I imagine it might. So give it a try, especially if the next two tips are great for applique. So, okay, if you've watched my videos, you know I love doing some things on the cheap. I love saving money. I think most of us do. And this was a tip from numerous viewers. Um, these are from a dollar store, so they were a dollar for a pack of two. These are flexible cutting mats perfect for templates. So if you use a lot of templates, this is perfect. You can cut right into them, draw your template on it, cut it out. Great for people that do applique and it's a dollar for both of these. I mean, you can't beat it. That's a great idea. So again, flexible cutting mats. Um, I got mine at the dollar store. Another idea you can use for templates. I do not have an example of it, so I'm just going to use one of these. This is one of those cutting mats, but they also sell rolls of harder plastic shelf uh, mats. That works really well. I did use those in our old house. I didn't bring them with us because they were stained and dirty and old. But I have seen that at local stores and it's another great way to make templates. Again, plastic shelving, the rolls of it, that's a little bit stiffer so you can use it for templates. If you're a machine quilter, this next tip is sure to save you money and help with your machine quilting. So in my last video, I mentioned using rubber latex gloves for hand quilting, uh, excuse me, not for hand quilting, for machine quilting. And somebody mentioned they use gardening gloves and they pick up a pair. Again, a great tip for doing it on the cheap is a, a pair from the dollar store. They work perfectly. 
put one on. They have the nice rubberized inside. They're perfect. They look a little bit better than the latex gloves. And I can keep these in my sewing room. Nobody else will use them. Great idea. So there you go, gardening gloves. I would have used the ones I had on hand. I had to go buy a new pair, but they are so muddy and dirty that I decided to go buy this pretty purple pair just for quilting. So thanks for that tip. The next three tips are gonna help you with your storage solutions. So tip number 16 and number 17, I don't have examples of, but I will go over them really quickly. The first one is, you know you get those big vinyl plastic bags uh, when you buy a bedding set, maybe a king size uh, sheets or something like that, and they usually have a zip top. They, people, a number of people mentioned that they use those for quilt storage or storage while they're working on a quilt. Great idea, they're great, they have little handles on them usually, perfect idea, and that way they don't, those big plastic bags don't go to the landfill right away. So that's number, uh, that's the, the first of the storage tips. One of my viewers suggested those compressible vacuum bags, those plastic bags, you can suck the air out and they go real flat and then you have lots of space. I think that's a great idea if you have them. Although I really can't speak to it, especially if you're doing long-term storage for quilts, uh, and especially if you're using maybe an antique quilt or something, I'm not sure how that would handle, the, how the fabric could handle that. So I would use care when using that tip. I think it's a great idea if you did a short-term use, maybe you just need to pack a few quilts away, or you're working on a larger quilt. Maybe um, you're, you have a small apartment or something like that, and you need the space and you're working on something, you could put it in one of those compressible bags and then pull it out when you need it. So thank you for that tip. Okay, one more storage tip, and this one, this is a plastic food container. I had a couple people mention that as well. This is a strawberry container that I washed out. I think this is great. Maybe you're working on a, a quilt that has small blocks, like half square triangles or something. Perfect, label, put a mark on the top what your project it's for, put your little blocks inside or the little pieces of fabric in it, and you're good to go. Seal it up, it's perfect. So thank you for that tip. Tip number 19 is a great way to use up some of your old bed sheets. So for all of you that do strip piecing and uh, sew your strips onto foundation first, this was a great idea. I have used newspaper in the past, but of course it got all over my fingers and all over the fabric and I won't do that again. Someone suggested using old bed sheets. Now this pillowcase is probably about 25 years old. I'm kind of embarrassed to admit that. This would be perfect. I never threw it out. It's all frayed. Um, that's perfect if I make another strip block. So old bed sheets for uh, the foundation for those strip piecing blocks. Don't throw out your clear red and green plastic plates. You'll need those for this next tip. So here's another one. I don't have an example of it. Sorry about that. Um, I had mentioned in my last video uh, using green or red clear glass to look through fabric, to look at fabric. You look through it to look at fabrics to get the value. You use the red for warm fabrics and the green for cooler fabrics, and it gets you that color value if it's light or dark. It sort of gets out uh, any color, you just see the, the value of the fabric. Well, somebody suggested going heading to your dollar store and getting plastic, clear plastic, green and red plates. Perfect, um, it's a lot cheaper than if you don't have the glass and you wanna go out and buy a glass, so there you go. Buy those plastic, clear, green, and uh, red plates, especially if you have one left over from Christmas, it's the perfect solution for that, and that'll help you get that value for your fabrics. Tip number 21 is a great way to use up some clothespins. Tip number 21, it's another one I don't have an example of, sorry about that. I usually use to mark my rows, I, especially when I'm doing a more complicated quilt, I like to mark my rows out, like with numbers or letters. And I use a pin, and sometimes that damages the fabric or you get just a little bit of that the little hole in the one corner. Well, this person suggested using clothespins. Great idea, wish I had some. I might have to hit to the dollar store and do that. It's a great way, especially if you have a thicker batch of fabrics, maybe a big row of, of big heavy fabrics, that's a lot easier than pinning through like 20 fabrics with one pin. So clothes pins, great idea. If you aren't sure what to use with those empty spools of thread, here's a great way to use them. Okay, so if you're like me, you get a lot of empty spools of thread and I never know what to do with them. I usually throw them away, but there are some other things you can do with them. And one is rolling up your binding, your extra binding. I, one thing I have is a lot of binding. I always make way too much. I sort of think I do it on purpose just because I like to keep it and then I use all my extra excess binding from other projects if I'm doing a really scrappy quilt and just need some scrappy binding. I love that look and it sort of reminds me of projects I've done in the past. But anyway, what I do is I roll them around this empty, uh, this empty spool of thread. Perfect. 
and then I keep them organized and they look a little bit neater and I can put them on a shelf and then pull them out when I need them. So there's a great use of an empty uh, spool of thread. Tip number 23 is a great way to use up those elastic hair bands that you might have sitting around the house. This is a tip I got from a lot of people and here's your bobbin of thread and it's loaded up, it's ready to go, but if you just put it in like this in your drawer, that thread's gonna unravel in no time. So a couple people suggested to use these little elastic headbands. These are little ones, they even have little baby ones. They wrap around, you can buy fancy gadgets to, to hold that thread in place, but perfect. It holds it just in place just fine. And it's cheap, it's easy, and you can use the rest for somebody's hair. <laughs> um, so there you go, using elastic to keep that bobbin thread in place. This tip is gonna help you when you're binding your quilt. Okay, this next one is sort of a two for one tip. And this is when you're basting. I don't know about you, but I baste with safety pins and my fingers always get really sore by the end of a project, especially if I'm basting a really big one. One person mentioned using a crochet hook. I'm not quite sure how that will work. I haven't tried it yet, but hey, give it a try. It might work really well. The other one is, and I don't have an example of it, is using a grapefruit spoon. Grapefruit spoons have those, like let's say this is the, the palm of the, uh, the cup of the spoon, and most spoons have a smooth end. Grapefruit spoons have little divots in the end or little ridges, and that is a way I have used that before when you're basing. You can push down on the, the safety pin and it works really well. So that helps save your fingers a little bit of pain. So that's my 24th tip is using a grapefruit spoon or you could try the crochet hook. Tip number 25 is a great tip that I've used in many of my videos and I'm gonna show it to you now. And it's perfect for those of you that do applique or use a lot of fusible webbing on your quilts. Okay, so we're at our last tip. And this tip, I have to say, it's just, it's one of those tips when you hear it, it's like, oh man, why haven't I done this all these years? And I, so I thank the viewer for giving me this tip a couple months ago. It was actually on a, one of my jewelry making videos. I was making some fabric earrings. Um, and for years, I use uh, fusible webbing on the back for an applique shape. It's that paper backed webbing. And I sit there and I pick and I pick and I pick and it takes forever to get that fabric off excuse me, that paper off of the back. I don't know why, I just can't, I don't have long nails either, so maybe that's part of it. Well, the viewer suggested using this pin and scoring the back just lightly. You don't wanna do it too much. You don't wanna tear through the fabric. I pull apart a little bit. It comes off in absolutely no time. And I just can't believe how many minutes I would have saved over the years when I, if I had known that tip. And I look back on the instructions, I didn't see it on my packaging. Um, so I thank that viewer for that tip. I've actually used the, shown that tip in a number of my videos since then. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you for that tip. I love that tip. So there you have it. There are my 25 tips from viewers. Thank you so much for all your comments and suggestions. I really appreciate it, and I've used quite a few of them. So thanks again. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like this video. Uh, that way you can see all of my videos. And lastly, don't forget I'm on social media, at Create with Claudia. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.